In the chilling darkness of the Dutch East Indies, HMAS Perth, a formidable lender-class light cruiser, sliced a silent but dangerous path through the abyss. Under the unyielding command of Captain Hector Waller, revered for his audacious tactics and deep-seated respect for his crew, the ship pressed onward in the Sunda Strait. While the vessel, an engineering marvel of the time, armed with eight six-inch guns and a Seagull 5 aircraft, was a symbol of Australia's naval prowess, she was, after all, in the Pacific Theater. A crucible of courage and endurance, every decision carried weight, and survival was never guaranteed. On February 28, 1942, the air was heavy, saturated with the dread of looming conflict and the salty tang of the sea, and the crew, a mix of seasoned mariners and eager greenhorns, moved calmly yet efficiently. That deceptive tranquility was just about to shatter. In an instant, the Royal Australian Navy crew had come face to face with a chilling reality, a full-fledged Japanese invasion force destined just for them. From England to Australia, The light cruiser HMS Amphion was christened on June 15, 1936, at the bustling naval shipyards of Portsmouth, England. The engineering marvel was part of the Lender class, with a displacement of 7,500 tons and dimensions of 554 feet in length and 56.7 feet in width. Armed with eight six-inch guns, eight four-inch dual-purpose guns, numerous automatic anti-aircraft weapons, and eight 21-inch torpedo tubes, our offensive and defensive capabilities were further augmented by an onboard Seagull 5 aircraft used for reconnaissance and spotting duties. However, the ship's destiny was not tied to the British waters. With World War II inching closer and closer, the Australian government acquired and commissioned her into the Royal Australian Navy as part of a strategic move on June 29, 1939. Capable of achieving a top speed of 32 knots, and housing a crew of 681, the newly christened HMAS Perth stood as a symbol of Australia's naval prowess. Perth began her service in the Caribbean and the Pacific until the spring of 1940, when she set course for the Mediterranean and played a minor role in the Battle of Matapan. She subsequently participated in the evacuations of Crete and Greece in April and May 1941. But despite being badly damaged during these operations, the spirit of Perth proved resilient. Moving on. After repairs and an extended refit in Australia, Perth returned to service, conducting operations off the coast of Syria before proceeding back to Sydney on August 12th. With a refit completed, Perth was once again active, performing patrol and escort operations off eastern Australia and visiting regions such as New Caledonia and New Guinea. It was during this period, in October 1941, that Captain Hector Waller took command of Perth, known for his bold tactics and deep regard for his crew. Waller would guide the cruiser through her most challenging of times. By then, the global stage was shifting, and in February 1942, after the entry of Japan into the war a short time before, she was ordered to join the ABDA, or American, British, Dutch, and Australian military forces at Batavia on the northern coast of Java in anticipation of a potential invasion. On the 14th, HMAS Perth set sail for the Netherlands' East Indies, marking the start of her active service in the Pacific War, where she and her crew would be put to the ultimate test. Close call. The skies over Batavia turned hostile upon Perth's arrival on February 24th, where Japanese aircraft filled the air with threats humming in the skies above them. The following day, Perth ventured towards Surabaya, joined by four ships from the Royal Navy. Their course took them along the north coast of Madura Island, and soon the squadron had expanded. Among them were Dutch light cruisers De Reuter and Java, heavy cruisers USS Houston and HMS Exeter, and a host of destroyers under the able leadership of Dutch Rear Admiral Carl Dorman. The squadron was now ready to intercept a Japanese invasion convoy. As night fell on the 27th, the Allies suddenly found themselves in the crosshairs of Japanese naval forces. 
Despite their collective firepower and determination, communication issues and a lack of air support impeded their efforts. USS Houston, one of their main assets, was operating with only six of her eight-inch guns due to damage from a previous air raid. The ensuing confrontation, known as the Battle of the Java Sea, was a disastrous affair for the ABDA force. Within seven grueling hours, the Allied fleet had lost five ships, with Perth and Houston emerging as the sole survivors. Beaten but not broken, the duo retreated to Tanjing Priok to replenish their resources. With barely any time to rest, their next goal was the Sunda Strait, a narrow passage to the southern Javanese coast, where they hoped to evade the prowling Japanese fleet. In the face of relentless adversity, HMAS Perth, driven by Waller's leadership, pushed onwards. Crossing the Strait As the night fell on February 28th, the battle-weary HMAS Perth and USS Houston, starved for fuel and low on ammunition, navigated the ominous waters of the Sunda Strait. The Allies had assumed the Strait was clear of enemy ships, but unbeknownst to them, Captain Waller was unwittingly steering his men into the path of the lurking Japanese Western invasion force. As the cruisers charted their courses westward, a silhouette emerged from the darkness at 11.06 p.m. The vigilant crew aboard Perth spotted an unidentified ship, and her evasive response and sudden change raised the alarm. Waller then identified the silhouette as the Japanese destroyer Harukaze. With no time to lose, the enemy ship was engaged, and the Allied guns roared to life in defense. The Battle of Sunda Strait had begun. In the initial fray, Perth sustained two hits, but the damage was minimal. Under Waller's unyielding command, the ship remained undeterred, with the crew members continuing to sail with resilience amidst the burgeoning chaos. As the clock nudged past midnight, the relentless ebb and flow of the battle took an abrupt turn. Suddenly, five torpedoes destined for Perth veered off course, their wrathful might descending upon four hapless Japanese transport ships. The men sighed with relief. They're everywhere. As the new day was born, Perth's fortune suddenly changed when a torpedo launched by Harukaze emerged from the watery abyss and found its mark, tearing through the forward engine room of the cruiser. Within moments, another torpedo followed. On the bridge, Captain Waller was forced to make the heartrending decision to abandon. The man's words had barely faded when another torpedo struck, only a few feet away from the first. Moments later, two more torpedoes found their mark, the final blows to a ship already teetering on the precipice. Perth righted herself before tilting to port, and at 12.25 a.m. on March 1st, she finally capsized and sank to the ocean's depth, carrying with her 353 souls, including Captain Waller. Nearby, Houston stood her ground against the onslaught, but she too was claimed by the sea, falling shortly after Perth. The Battle of Sunda Strait exacted a steep price, with light Japanese losses, one transport and one minesweeper sunk, and several damaged vessels. Survivors held on to life amid the waves, only to be dragged into the brutal confines of Japanese prisoner of war camps. Among them were men destined for HMAS Hobart. Of Perth's company of 686, which included four civilian canteen staff, and six RAAF personnel for operating her aircraft, only 218, including one civilian and two RAAF, returned home. Unearthing. Decades later, in 1967, businessman and recreational scuba diver David Burchell unveiled the submerged silhouette of HMAS Perth. Lying on her side, about 115 feet beneath the azure waves, the shipwreck presented a stunningly intact vision of the past. For a while, she remained remarkably preserved, with her existence known only to the sea. However, in 2013, the solemn peace was shattered when unauthorized Indonesian marine salvagers descended upon the site with cranes and powerful explosives. The resulting devastation compromised the structural integrity of the ship. In their reckless pursuit, the salvagers exposed dangerous remnants of a past era, including live munitions and oil tanks. Two years later, American and Indonesian Navy divers 
undertook a survey of the plundered shipwrecks of Perth and Houston that painted a grim picture. The ship's six-inch gun turrets, starboard side armor belt, hull plating, propellers, and a significant portion of the propulsion machinery had vanished. In 2017, the Indonesian National Research Center for Archaeology proposed that HMAS Perth be declared a cultural heritage site, but the outcome remains unclear. Although the physical remnants of HMAS Perth may have been pillaged, her legacy during the height of the Pacific Theater operations remains. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed this dive into the life and legacy of HMAS Perth, consider subscribing to Dark Seas and all our Dark Documentaries channels, where we delve into the most impressive stories from modern warfare and the technology behind them. Also, please give us a like and make sure to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest content. Stay tuned for more.